Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your secret identity to the masses? You never reveal your secret identity in the social media. If that were the case, Spider-Man wouldn't have been Peter Parker for all that time, even though he's Dr. Octopus now. I'm Ant Fish. You spoiled Peter Parker's identity. I didn't say he was Spider-Man. Oh, damn it. <laughs> well, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> Well, no, it's nice to get a chance to talk to you because uh, even though I saw you at Yomacon, I didn't really get to talk to many of the Team Four Star guys, so apologies if it seemed like I was shining you guys off. Oh, no, no, that's all right, that's all right. We understand how busy uh, you guys are with your interviews and your uh, radio and such. Well, it was nice to see, you know, a lot of the drunken happenings, though, in the green room. That, that uh, was yeah, fun. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are always fun. Those are always fun when you got that much free booze and that many people who are poor to to drink. (laughs) And Cards Against Humanity was a nice touch, too. I saw that. I I think we tried one night to play that. I I know I sat down next to Megami and my cousin, and we tried playing, and people just kept dropping out, and it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. the thing about uh, Cards Against Humanity is that, like, it's... It's best to do it in, like, a group of, like, five to seven. Like, if you do, like, a ridiculous number, like, eight, then then it just, it gets boring because then it's like, okay, which one of these are awesome? Because then chances are, like, not all of them are going to be sweet. You'd rather, you know, four quarters than a hundred pennies. I think the issue is that people were so drinky drinky that they kept getting distracted like ooh pretty window or ooh look at that person (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah that too for sure (laughs) I I think the best Cards Against Humanity game we had actually is uh, Christopher Robin Miller invited us to his room late one night and I think the five or six of us played and it was a a lot of fun and we probably stayed up later than we should have all things considered but hey Oh, yeah, man, hey, do what you do to have fun, and if Christopher Robin Miller invites you to your room, you don't say no. Pretty much. He is the voice of Subway. He is? Is he? Yes. (laughs) What? Serious? Like in America or like internationally? I I think it's in the U.S. He's also the voice of Kroger's, I believe. I have no idea what that is. It's a, I believe it's a um, grocery store uh, chain more in the... It sounds like an angry grocery store. <laughs> you come in and you buy, and then you leave. Actually, yeah, I've never thought about it that way. Um, I, they're not really here in Vegas. They're more up in Chris's area, in like <laughs> Ohio and New Hampshire esque, okay. somewhere in there, in that vicinity. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. I didn't know about that. I'm definitely gonna message him about that. <laughs> I, I was really lucky because I got five dollar footlongs for one of my cards, <laughs> so it was like perfect to use it on him. Ah, oh, so good. <laughs> oh, but how did you enjoy Yomacon? I enjoyed it a lot. Year? In comparison to last year? Well, no, it's just it's it's technically not Yomacon this year because it's 2014. It would be Yomacon. Yeah, that is that is true. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like any convention I get invited to is like a dream that I never want to wake up from because it's just I like I never realized in my life I'd ever be able to do stuff like this or that I would have ever thought to to do stuff like this. But no, it was it was just so much fun being able to see everybody, being able to see all of the fans, uh, being able to, to, to talk with people, to have uh, great drunken times and have stuff videotaped and like I said, it's just a dream that you never want to wake up from. Do you still get that feeling of like, oh my god, I can't believe like there's this many people at the panel and I can't believe I'm actually signing autographs and, you know, that feeling? Uh, at first I was like, oh my god, like when I went to Yumacon in 2010, I think it was, it was my first time meeting the guys, I was like, oh man, like there's just so many people. Actually, no, to be honest, like, I knew how big Team Four Star was, and, like, they told me about, like, uh, all the conventions that they go to and, like, the number that they bring in, and I that, that kind of prepared me for, like, to expect how many people I know would be there. So, like, when I see, like, a huge, like, room full of people, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, 
No, of course. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's crazy that people are actually willing to, to stand in line and wait that long just to be able to see us or to be able to have us sign stuff. It's really, it's really, really puts things in perspective with how much you're bringing these people joy and happiness. Yeah, in terms of 91.8 The Fan, I'm still not over that aspect of it. Like, wait, you want me to what? You want me to sign something? I, <laughs> my signature looks like chicken scratch. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might I always ruin it. With my signature. Like, I'll just be like, all right, ant fish. And, like, once I do ants, my mind will either go to an H or an F. And so I'm like, oh, no. And then I can't go back. And then some signatures, like, look horrible and others just look like bleh. But I've, I'm not, like, writing, like, cursive for, like, signatures for, like, how I do it is very, uh, very up and downs at different, different points. Did you practice at home? <laughs> nah. nah, I go in blind. Well, that's the way to do it. Be a rebel. Exactly. Go with your morning scotch. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I hate scotch. Okay. Vodka? Nah. Tequila? Uh, there's never ever been a story, a good story that ever started with, so this one time I had tequila, so. <laughs> that might uh, be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I used to actually drink a lot when I was, like, in college. I used to do, like, rum and coke and, like, finish 26ers at parties and then, uh, vomit my brains out in, uh, whatever looked like a toilet or a bathtub. So, like, ever since then, I was just like, okay, I don't feel like drinking anymore. So now I just stick with, like, dark beers. I have never had that experience before. In fact, I think I drank the most at Yomacon this year because I'm, uh, or technically last year. I'm 22, and even though I live in Vegas, I just don't have the, you know, the drive to want to drink. It's like, you, I've seen it, you know. I'm, I'm in the city. <laughs> I feel like if you if like you don't have like a reason to drink, then you don't really need to drink. Like if it's for like celebratory stuff, then yeah, I totally understand that. But if it's for something like I'm gonna drink just cause, then it's like, uh, well, not not that I'm judging anybody, but you know, if you're gonna drink, don't don't do it for the wrong reasons. No, I agree. I mean, when I was at Yomacon, our speakers blew, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm usually con mom. Screw it. I'll drink. So I decided yeah. to try a bunch of things. I think I finally found something I liked, which was like lemonade and so sweet tea vodka and something else. Okay. Uh, you know, so. That would be good. Yeah, finally found something that I, I enjoyed enough to be able to drink. <laughs> but, uh, you know, usually at conventions, it's kind of all work and business for me to a certain degree. Besides seeing friendly faces again. Cause oh, yeah, for sure. Leaving leaving Yomacon this year was like, really? I, I got on, like, closing ceremony stage and I was all sad. And Yeah, I saw. Oh. I think everybody was. Well, everybody who could stay for closing ceremonies, at least. Mm-hmm. I think it's because you get used to seeing these people on like a yearly basis and then you're just like, oh no, I can't, I can't see them for like either a whole nother year and that's, you know, a maybe. Yeah, actually, so. exactly. That's the way I see it. Like when people, <clears throat> when people are like, hey, are you going to Yumicon next year? I'm like, ha, huh, maybe. Because I don't know, like I, I find like if Team Four Star is going somewhere, I don't usually bother asking them like, hey, can I come? Because... I don't know, like, if they ask me if they want to go to a convention, I'll be like, uh, yeah, sure, if it's cool with them and all that. So, luckily, that's how I've been able to get to Yomacon and Kineticon, because they asked me. Plus, I live, like, on the East Coast, so it's, like, uh, pretty, pretty close to where I live. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, for me, I'm all the way in Vegas, so it's it's a pretty big trip, but it's a lot of fun to get there, and hopefully we'll see each other at another Yomacon. Yeah, hopefully. I'd enjoy that. And hopefully I'll get more of a chance to talk to you guys. I actually had quite a few events that weekend on top of our table, so um, I made sure to try and say hi to everybody really quick, and then it was like, okay, is everybody safe? Is everybody fed? Mm. Is everybody, you know, because I have to make sure that all my peeps are taken care of. <laughs> right on, right on. Somebody has to be the mom. Yep. But either way, we were talking to uh, HBI2K 
earlier in the week, and we got a chance to ask him about a project that you're also working on, which is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure at Bridge. Yep. And so, what was the reasoning behind doing that show specifically? Uh... I used to do, like, parody dubs and all that stuff of, like, Spongebob and Dragon Ball Z, and uh, I, I did this other series called Animes I Don't Watch, which essentially was I would uh, t- take, like, a popular anime that was popular around that time and just, like, write my own little sketch and dub it over and do all the voices and all that stuff. And uh, I stopped doing that when my account was deleted, so I was like, okay, I don't, I don't want to bother trying to do this again because it was it was too much work like i had to do research into something i didn't really care about so it felt like i didn't i wasn't really getting much out of it except for laughs which which are great but in the long run like i knew it wouldn't last because of all the multiple copyright uh problems that i knew that was going to happen but uh, i did jojo's bizarre adventure because it's the only manga that i've ever actually read other than Vinland Saga and I I loved it and then when I found out that they made an OVA back in like 1993 and then they continued it in 2003 I was like okay I'm gonna try this I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my hat into the abridging ring see how it goes and it went well and uh uh, three or four years ago I did the the first abridged series and now the new anime came out and everyone like kept asking me, like, Antfresh, are you going to abridge the new anime? And uh, I would always reply with a wink face, uh, because the answer would obviously be yes. And uh, once uh, I, I knew the anime was coming out and all that, I started writing episodes once each episode started airing, because I knew what was, what was happening, because I read the manga so th- thoroughly. So, yeah, I just decided to do the abridged series because I wanted to throw my hat and try this abridging stuff on one show rather than a multiple bunch of other shows. I can understand that. And it's got such a cult following for that show. I'm I'm always kind of sad that it's not licensed anywhere because I'm assuming due to the musical references of oh, the yeah. show. Yeah, that's 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 a big thing. Uh, with it like even even in the OVA they had to change some stuff like there's a, there's a character uh, his name is Vanilla Ice <laughs> and, please uh, tell me it looks like him <laughs> it looks absolutely nothing like him dang it <laughs> yeah yeah but no um yeah there's a character called Vanilla Ice and in the the OVA they called him Iced and when they made the game for PlayStation, his name was also Iced. So a bunch of characters, yeah, like you said, had to be uh, recalled. Even in even in part two, like there's a character called ACDC, a character called Wham, a character called Cars, and in the and when the new uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure video game came out, the the European release, they had to change the name. So Wham was Wamu because that's how uh, the Japanese said it, and ACDC became ACDC. So it was like instead of A C slash D C, it was like E S I S I D I or something like that. It was something ridiculous. And cars was spelled with a K and a Z. You know, I always assume that was the reason we haven't really gotten it in the U.S. Because I I remember they licensed the OVA, I believe, by I, I think it's the Japanese company that does like animation and publishing, and they like had a North American branch just to t- to release this. It didn't sell well or something, or they didn't market it or whatever. And they're like, well, we give up. And then I don't know what happened. Viz had it for a while, and, like the manga, and I think they stopped in 2010. I don't know. I just I wish there was more JoJo Bizarre Adventure in the world. Yeah, uh, actually, I think the reason why they stopped uh, with Viz, because I remember reading this back in the day, there's a, there's a page in JoJo Bizarre Adventure where Dio's actually reading the Quran. And oh yeah! You heard about that? I, I I think I saw it on Wiki. Actually, I was looking it up a few days before we talked to um uh, talked to HBI Two K. Yeah, 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 yeah. That whole thing was really interesting to me. But for the listeners that don't know, would you like to elaborate? With uh, well, I don't I don't really know the details too much, but I I 
I assume that because like the that he was reading the Quran, uh, I forget what he was saying. It was either something about peace or something about violence, and uh, I believe an organization of some kind was. A, I don't. I don't want to say like offended or. or I, like I said, I don't really know the details too much. All I know is that that was a reason why Viz couldn't uh, uh, do it because I guess they were afraid that they would um, offend or maybe uh flame the, the the flame the blow the flames of hatred or whatever or uh, i'm not i'm not i don't know the details but i think that is the reason why they they couldn't uh do it yeah i think that would be a pretty good reason for it too i mean the game seems so good i want to play it so much will somebody bring yeah. it over please <laughs> no, it's coming it's coming to america the the playstation 3 game is it really i didn't know that i i knew it got a european release but i had not heard of a u.s release uh if the, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure i want to say that like no they will do a, a u.s release because i know a bunch of people in the u.s who like tried so hard who like try so hard to get the game and uh a friend of mine told me like that his friend had like spent maybe like a hundred something dollars on it just so we can uh, plus shipping just so we can bring it to like his house and then he found out that there would be a north american release i feel like though if they do a north american release like a lot of it like i'm very interested to see what what they do with the names because like names like king crimson uh sticky fingers aerosmith uh sex pistols like those are clear like there's no way someone's gonna be like oh they're talking about something else no that's clearly about the bands yeah <laughs> kiss stone free actually too another thing that i that i'm a little worried about is that a lot of the songs in the the, the game have are like uh pretty much references to to songs itself for example jolene her stand's name is stone ocean no, sorry. Her her stand's name is Stone Free, which is a, a play on Jimi Hendrix's Jimi Hendrix's song Stone Free, and her theme song is actually pretty much the Stone Free song. Same with ACDC. Like at the beginning, it's like uh, Thunderstruck, and then it goes into Back in Black. Yeah, the way royalties work. Um, this is. Something I know from from the radio stuff is um, different territories. The the way the music royalties work are considered different. For example, if you're watching like a like a Korean drama, I know Jap Japan and Korea aren't the same place, but uh, they will almost always use some like '90s '80s. 2000 like pop song from the US because they they barely have to pay anything on in royalties or they have yeah. like a blanket agreement on it and I'm assuming it's something similar uh, in Japan though they seem a lot more strict when it comes to uh, to royalties and copyrights and things like that so I don't know we'll see I'm very curious uh, now and I'll have to look up who's publishing that but what do you think of uh, fan reaction in terms of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Abridged uh, a lot of I find uh, uh, I find a lot of people who tend to like really really like the show uh, tend to like more so the characters rather than the show itself, which completely makes sense. Like I'm the exact same way when it comes to to, to liking something. I will I like I like I like characters more so than the show itself. So um, it was actually funny at at Kineticon. I met my first ever JoJo cosplayers, like in person, and I was so I was like, "Oh my God, you, you look you dressed up as Dio and JoJo! Like you guys are amazing. Can I take your picture?" And they were like, "Sure, of course." And then after I took the picture, they asked me if I was Antfish, and I said, "Oh yeah, I am." And they they were just like, "Oh my God, we love your stuff!" And I was like, "Really?" And they were like, "Yeah." And I was it was it was really it was really cool like to be able to see people who are like into like fans of jojo dressing up as characters in jojo and then the girl who dressed up as dio actually asked a, a question at a panel that we did and she referred to herself as i dio which i i i don't take any credit for that at all because like even in the japanese he always sit like he tends to say i dio or pretty much like all the villains in jojo's bizarre adventure refer to themselves as i apostrophe enter name here which is is pretty cool. 
I've gotten uh, Christmas actually. He gave me three uh, three tarot cards from Stardust Crusades, which is, was really cool of him, by the way. And like, I've even like received other JoJo stuff, like like drawings and and fan art, and it just it it blows my mind to see that people actually like know and care enough about the series to 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 think that I do anything in terms of like helping it flourish because I don't but I mean people have I guess asked like said oh because of your series I got into JoJo's and that's really cool because like you said there's not a lot of JoJo fans in America so and it has such a cult following and me myself I I consider myself to be more of like an independent in the sense that I like things to be like underground like i'm very much into like underground music and and movies and and games and all that stuff so to be able to be a part of like a uh a, a group that is very underground for a show that's incredibly popular somewhere else but not very popular here is really cool to me no i can see how that would be really neat i mean I, I, I think if somebody just grabbed the show, you'd have an audience. I think it would oh, yeah. so well. I feel but... like Funimation would, would grab it. Yeah, it's, it's so ridiculous. Well yeah. It. Uh, kind of like, kind of like Toriko in a way. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know if you were familiar with that show. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I met I met uh, Ian St. Clair at oh, Yomacon yeah. last year. I actually just saw him at Otakon Vegas where they were premiering Space Dandy. And... Oh, yeah, yeah. Good for him. That's That's amazing. Yeah, I saw the first episode. I haven't seen the second yet. Um, I've been watching off my PS4 because right it's the only place I can watch the dub because I don't have cable. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got to I gotta rent it on PS4 every time I want to watch it. <laughs> right on, right on. But I will say one of the interesting things I heard from HBI2K, and I know most of my information is coming from him, is that you're a very hands-on director. So a lot of times, I guess, when people send you lines, or I don't know if you the process is you guys are in a Skype call together or what, but you'll be like, no, I want it done this way, or I want it done in this very specific way. And I, I like to hear that from people, even if it is for more of a fan project. Yeah, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who, like, I always envision how things will look or say before they're actually done. And it, it, it makes me, uh, at for like a, a brief amount of time, not so happy with how stuff ends up because of either A, I don't know enough how to do it, or, or B, I just, uh, I don't put enough time into it. But um, usually for like, when people speak, I always have like a, like always, I always talk to myself whenever I write uh, anything, so that way I'll be able to know how how the conversation will go. So with with HBI's character, I, I I did I had a very very idea of how I wanted George Joestar to sound and how I wanted his mannerisms to be. So I gave him uh, some examples. I told him uh how what the character is like his relationship with with these characters how he would say these things why he would say these things and i feel it it, it brought out uh probably one of the the funniest the, the funniest characters in the abridged series i will admit uh one thing that i am very uh guilty of is that i'm always constantly like changing things like if like at first, I had uh, one one line that I wanted HBI to do, to to say, and then like I went to sleep, and then as I was going to sleep, my my mind was still on the episode, and then then I thought of the idea. Oh, it's almost Scotch o'clock. So like I went up, I like wrote it down in my phone. Then the next day, I asked, Hey, uh, I was wondering if I can get a new line because I thought of something new. And he said, Sure, absolutely. It's it's sad that he's his character is dead and has been resurrected as a cow now. So <laughs> honestly, like that's the cute that was the cutest picture. And and I want to say a uh, uh, big ups to Frob Man. He is the guy who does like all the art that I for for the series. Like I I, like, I always ask him like, hey man, do you think you could like draw uh, like. Uh, 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 
blood coming out of somebody's eyes or blood coming out of somebody's ears or maybe George Joestar is a cow or or uh, Jonathan holding a fork but with uh, a piece of uh, his dog on it like he's he's an incredible artist and he's always like absolutely sure and he does it right away he's a great guy if you guys need an artist look up frob man perfect i'm sure some of the listeners out there will be intrigued by that uh, i hope they are <laughs> well no it's it's really nice to talk to you about this project but are there any other projects that you want the listeners to know about anything you're working on or anything that you know we haven't touched upon Oh, the, the Team Four Star stuff, uh, everybody knows about the Team Four Star stuff, but uh, uh, what, I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, what I'm working on right now, uh, I'm not really working on anything, like I'm still looking for like uh, voice acting gigs and all that. I recently actually, uh, a video game that I did came out called Stick It to the Man, it's this is a game that you can pick up on Steam, as well as PlayStation 3 and PS Vita. I play uh, an enormous amount of characters, and like, and it, it stars a bunch of other people. Uh, Ty Konzak, uh, Marianne Miller, uh, Cassie Uwalu, uh, oh. Jonathan Cook. Um, I think Kimlin was in it as well. Yes, yes, she was. She was. She was. She was in that, yeah. Uh, and yeah, just, just a bunch. It's a, it's a great game. Sean Shiplock, uh, it's, it's a great game. A lot of, a lot of very funny characters. Um, what else? What else? I recently actually, uh, got to announce a game that I was in, uh, on Tuesday, which was, which is one of those, those, uh, those casual games by Big Fish called, uh, oh man, I'm going to have to look that up one more time but uh i got it's it off the of what... dangerous games yes 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 dangerous games uh d- what you said prisoners of destiny <laughs> prisoners of destiny yes i play three characters uh in that and uh i'm currently recording stuff for the journey down chapter two which um actually stars uh martin billany as one of the, ca- the characters which is uh, very cool to me getting to to work with him on a professional level and uh what else what else what else uh there's nothing else that i can really say that i'm doing because you know ndas and such but uh if you love them such (laughs) yeah we do but if you want to check out any of my my voice acting stuff you can check it out on my facebook at anthony sardina vo and on youtube at anthony sardina vo as well actually one thing i want to say that was uh, probably what made uh, 2013 a great year for me was that I was able to announce that I was a character in the Canadian animation Totally Spies. Ah, yes, I did see that. I remember watching Totally Spies quite a bit when I was a little bit younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was very surprised, too, that the the show even uh, was still going when I, when I got the call. And... Uh, I got the audition. I was even more surprised by that, that I booked it. Well, hey, and now you can say you got to be in a show with uh, three fabulous women. (laughs) At at, at long last, after all these years. (laughs) Too bad it wasn't Charlie's Angels, but hey, it's close Uh, enough. (laughs) Yeah, close enough. But no, that's really exciting news. Now, for the fans that want to keep track of all of your upcoming projects, do you social media? Can they stalk you any place on the interwebs? Oh, yeah, totally. On Twitter, I'm antfish321. Uh, on Facebook, like I said, if you want to follow my uh, my voice acting and such, I'm at Anthony Sardina Vio. And on YouTube, which and I don't really... I don't socialize on that. I just post clips and then that link to my website... Uh, Anthony Vo, which is on YouTube, and and Tumblr is Antfish, which I I post a lot of uh, black women on that. Fair enough. Possibly <laughs> not safe for work. <laughs> oh no 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 no! It's completely safe. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now, are there any events where the fans can catch you at? Uh. I'm, I might be at Yomacon again uh, in 2014. Kineticon uh, seems like a convention I probably will be a part of. I might be going to another convention in Canada. I'm still, 
I'm still not sure. Uh, but but yeah, like I said, uh, all that information and stuff will be on my Twitter, my my Facebook, and my Tumblr, and all that stuff. So uh, so yeah, just just keep posted on there. Awesome. And now for the fans out there, we have a tradition that we do on ninety one point eight The Fan, and I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate. Okay. Yeah. Sure. What is it? Basically, we ask if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. Of course, of course. Awesome. I've Every- many uh, radio bumps in my life. Which is always a plus. That means you yep. might not mess up as much. But if you do mess up, everybody gets to hear it. Right on. <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> we basically ask if you'd be willing to say, Hello, my name is, you insert your name. I do this. You can insert characters, you're a voice actor, whatever you want to put there. Okay. And you're tuned into. 91.8 the fan yeah all right not 90 not 98.1 because no. that's that's a channel in in toronto it's a channel in a lot of places but yeah. no, it is it is 91.8 all right all right <clears throat> i can do it now yes you're all set to go hi this is anthony sardina creator of jojo's bizarre adventure abridged and you're listening to 91.8 the fan see you didn't even have to do it again all right. Skittles everywhere. It's raining uh, skittles. Skittles falling <laughs> from the sky. Now I'm hungry. Colors Skittles. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Any words of wisdom, dating advice, weather forecast, predictions for the end of the world? I've got many things I could ask you. <laughs> uh, networking and not working is just one letter away. If you're in a per- if you're in like a, a profession that encourages uh, networking, such as uh, any any form of arts, always even if there's like a little indie convention, if you're an artist or a voice actor or, or a graphic designer or anything like that, go up to those people, have business cards ready, tell them, hey, I do this, I'd love to help out in any way, shape, or form. Let's keep in contact. It hasn't worked for me yet. Actually, wait, no, that's a lie. Also, get get a LinkedIn if you're serious. I, LinkedIn... I agree with all those points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The networking has been the way we've done most of our interviews. We have to kind of jump from people to people, but hey, it works. Exactly, schmoozing and boozing. Yeah, as long as you're not too, you know, schmoozing. Like not too booze to, to schmooze. Well, the, the booze part is one thing, but, you know, you can only smooze, t- smooze too far <laughs> until until you get to a point of like, what is this? What is this girl on? Is she like flirting yeah. with me? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> but no, thank you so much for this. This was a lot of fun. Oh, no problem. It was a lot of fun for me, too. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, shame on you. But don't fret. It'll be up on the website within the next few days. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.